Could degrowth ever make serious headway? After all, widespread social backlash against environmental policies has been seen in recent years. In the UK, for instance, the introduction of ultra-low emission zones in urban areas became politically divisive, alongside conspiracy theories around the 15-minute city. 15-minute cities are simply initiatives to promote sustainable mobility and local economies, but they became wrapped up in concerns about state overreach and control. The Netherlands, meanwhile, has seen the rise of a new protest party, the Farmer Citizen Movement challenging new state controls on highly polluting forms of farming. This has coincided with far-right parties being voted in around the world and surely gives pause for thought about the way that radical eco-social change can be brought about. It is easy to be pessimistic about the political palatability of radical movements like degrowth. After all, it implies a downscaling of aggregate throughput in countries of the global north. However, the degrowth author Jason Hickel has compiled a useful list of data exploring the popularity of degrowth and degrowth-related ideas. See the link in the description for more references on Jason's website. The data shows that many scientists support post-growth. A survey has shown that in the EU, 86% of climate policy researchers support post-growth positions. A survey of people in 34 European countries found an average that 61% are in favour of post-growth. A study of European citizens' assemblies found high approval rates for sufficiency-oriented policies, that is, policies which aim for enough, not ever-extending growth. 56% of people in a global survey agree with the statement that capitalism does more harm than good, and 70% of US Americans believe that environmental protection is more important than economic growth. This sort of polling data on public perceptions must always be taken with a grain of salt, for various reasons but it can hint at underlying trends and beliefs. If any political slogan is misunderstood, it is degrowth. What the data shows us is that, rather than being founded on some fundamental anti-environmentalism, the backlash against environmental protection is often against the way in which policies supposed to protect the environment are technocratically or undemocratically imposed on communities. This was perhaps most clearly seen with the Gilets jaunes movement in France, who were protesting the unfair imposition of a carbon tax. Meanwhile, the rich were let off the hook. For this reason, the degrowth movement has always emphasised inclusive, democratic and participatory change, and as the research mentioned above shows, can be surprisingly popular. For more on topics like this, have a look around at other videos on this channel.